everybody. I hope you're all well. I'm a bit cold today. My heating broke down, so my nose is a bit hot, cold and my fingers, never mind. Um, so today I'm going to do professional development reviews for nurses and nursing associates. This is part of the nurse education series on my YouTube channel, Support and Career Development for Nurses. And I'm going to give an overview of professional development reviews with lots of practical tips to help you prepare for a review. You might be a reviewer doing conducting a review for your first time or a newly registered nurse or nursing associate who's being reviewed, wondering what to expect. So I hope you find it helpful. If you find it helpful, give me a thumbs up as well. So what is a professional development review? During your career, all registered nurses and nursing associates require ongoing regular feedback in a professional development review. And this is where your progression is evaluated related to your specific role, which informs your professional development plan going forward. And that plan is reviewed again at your next review meeting. And professional development reviews, therefore, are based on evaluations and different employers will have different paper uh, documentation. You might be evaluated on learning goals or learning outcomes, objectives or role specific competencies. Following your review, new goals and objectives are set. So the structure of a professional development review, there's usually three parts. So when you're looking through documentation with most employers, there'll be a performance element that looks at your progression and your achievements to date. Then there's the setting of future objectives aligned to the role. And then there's planning, professional and career development linked to your future development plans and your individual education, training needs and overall support. An important part of the review process is that it's a two way conversation with an experienced reviewer to review your achievements and any challenges or expectations in your role. It's not just a one way conversation. However, if you're newly registered, you might need a bit more guidance to go through the documentation, for example. But it's very much your opportunity to say how you feel if you're being reviewed. And the reviewer should be asking open questions to find out how that person feels and how they how they feel they've progressed and if they need more support. Who's going to conduct my review? Usually your line manager conducts the review. It may be a preceptor during your preceptorship period, who isn't your line manager. It could be a preceptor and a line manager. If you're more experienced, um, it's usually, as I said, it's usually your line manager, but sometimes you might have more of a collaborative or multi-professional review. If you're an advanced nurse practitioner or a researcher, for example, you might have a researcher who's a medic, who's a lead researcher on the team, um, who it's, it's appropriate for them to be in the review with you. Usually when you first start, you have three to six monthly professional development reviews, and then you have an annual appraisal for the rest of your career should be offered. But after that, usually the reviews will be depending on what you negotiate with your reviewer and as often as you feel that you need them. So what to expect? Professional development reviews should be documented and it's helpful to review the documentation. Is it paper or is it online? And many employers nowadays have online structured professional development reviews. It should be face to face. It can be virtual if it suits both the reviewer and the person being reviewed always confidential so that that person that's being reviewed feels that they're in a safe place where um, they can open up if needed to the reviewer and be honest and open. The reviewer should always use a supportive and constructive approach. It's not appropriate to line manage or performance manage a staff member in a professional development review that should be um, conducted in a performance management meeting. 
So looking at what to expect, there's going to be a review and feedback on your progress and that will align to your job description, role specific competencies or proficiencies. It could be your objectives. It could align to local professional strategic or employer requirements or key performance indicators. It really depends on your role and your employer's documentation. So do check that out. Your manager should always include your views. As I said earlier, it's a two way conversation in a professional development review. It is not a one way conversation and both parties in that meeting should agree the objectives, the expected outcomes for the next meeting and future support and training required. And once completed, your professional development review and your professional development plans should be signed off by both people, the reviewer and the person that's been reviewed. And that's very important because sometimes you have to have those sign offs for applying for courses, for example. Whatever your role, you should be allocated a minimum of one name person to support your professional development reviews. You should have an orientation and a preceptorship period if you're a new start and registered nurse or nursing associate and then ongoing professional development reviews throughout your career and your reviews will link to role specific outcomes as I mentioned role specific job descriptions or pit, um, proficiencies or competencies learning outcomes objectives or smart goals if you're interested I have got a um, talk on my YouTube channel writing aims, objectives and SMART goals if your employer asks you to write your own SMART goals. What should you expect when you first start in a role? Ideally, you should have that professional development review at three, six, nine and 12 months. That's the gold standard link to preceptorship. The minimum would be sort of six monthly, I would say, and sort of the first month, six monthly and then annually, but ideally every three months. And that will lead to a 12 month annual appraisal. And I will be doing a talk in the future about appraisals and some tips for appraisals, preparing your appraisal. After you are established in a role, you should negotiate regular professional development reviews as and when needed. And you can ask for advice from your reviewer. And I would say always set the next review date at that meeting, the end of the meeting. So you have it in your diaries. Um, if you're interested, I have a talk on preceptorship for nurses as well. And as I said, I'll do a talk in the future preparing for an appraisal. So how do you prepare for a professional development review and some tips? For reviewers, the person that might be doing a review for their first time and for those um, nurses and nursing associates being reviewed. So starting with some advice for reviewers first. Helpful to familiarise yourself with the documentation and the professional development review structure. It's helpful to shadow people, to observe reviewers conducting some reviews, and you might want somebody in with you for your first review as well. Knowing what opportunities are available for the person before the review meeting is really helpful because it shows that you're really interested in that person's development. Are there study days, e-courses, apprenticeships, academic courses, learning opportunities, research scholarships or fellowships that will support that person? If there is, you need to think about how feasible it is to offer the study days as well, because they might ask you if you're um, suggesting um, some of these opportunities. Very helpful to always start with open questions to explore the person's perceptions of their progress, their achievements and their support. You know, just how are you doing? How do you feel you've progressed? And just some open questions will get that conversation going. Achievements should always be recognised and I always start reviews with a positive and the progress that's been made. So before you discuss areas that you feel need to be developed as a review and you're evaluating, um, it's helpful to start with those positives and think about your language. You shouldn't start with these things. I don't think you're very good at this. It's about being constructive and positive and to try and motivate that person and to retain that person in the role, and giving them the knowledge, the skills to, to be happy in the role. So asking them about areas for development where do you where do you think you um, need some support 
and um, which areas do you want to develop in the future? And always end positively with an agreed action plan and the next review date. What you definitely should not do in a professional development review is discuss disciplinary issues. Time should always be set aside in a separate performance meeting to discuss serious performance issues adhering to local performance and conduct policy. So some questions to think about regarding your review if you're a newly registered nurse or nursing associate. Firstly, establishing who's going to conduct your review, what their contact details are, do you have their email, how do they expect you to book the review, establish how often you need to meet your reviewer over the next year and plan well in advance. So I would book in those three monthly review meetings well in advance and have them in calendar diaries early on. How will they document your review and assess your progress? Are they going to be related to role specific competences, for example, or learning outcomes? So what's their expectation before you go to that meeting? Where can you find additional resources to, to support your review and your future plans? So it's helpful to look on the employer intranet. Looking at the support that's available for newly registered nurses and nursing associates, I um, have a video on my YouTube channel that gives a really simple overview of what should be available for you, because you may that may come up in a discussion in your review. Prior to attending your professional development meeting, it's very helpful to reflect on your career journey so far and your progression and think about which roles or courses or career pathways suit your interests and your skills and your strengths. Identify any professional training or academic courses that might help your development. They might be local courses or national courses and establish which courses are funded by your employer or externally. There may be some free e-learning courses. Find out how to formally request and apply for post registration courses and funding or any paid study leave. And within your review meeting, often reviewers will advise as well, but sometimes they might not have um, that knowledge so it's helpful to be proactive. There needs to be a clear communication between you and your line manager to ensure you both benefit from clearly defined professional development plans so they have to be agreed together and be proactive as I said bring reflections and examples um, of something that you've achieved or something that you feel that you've done really well in your role that's helpful for the reviewer. If you're interested, I've got some helpful videos on um, educational and funding opportunities, such as which post-registration nursing course to choose, how do you get funding for post-registration UK nursing courses, and my talk on different research nurse roles and how to become a nurse researcher talks about funding scholarships, fellowships and studentships, for example, if you want to pursue research. I've also got some helpful videos on career pathways, such as how to become a charge nurse or nursing sister or senior nurse, different nurse educator roles and becoming a nurse educator. Or you might be interested in becoming a specialist nurse or advanced nurse practitioner or, and also reviewing the four pillars of advanced practice. So those videos are there if anyone's interested. So I hope you found this um, talk helpful. Do check out my two books, um, How to Prepare for Interviews and Develop Your Career and How to Thrive as a Newly Qualified Nurse. And there is links to um, buy the books in my video description if you're interested. And I'm very happy to answer any questions um, in the YouTube channel or if you prefer to DM me because you don't want to put questions publicly um, do just link to me on Twitter or my website or Instagram but I hope you found the session helpful.